then we will talk uh, about the different components of the uh, color jet we get during our assessment of matter regurgitation. First of all, the flow tends to converge uh, in this pattern, and this area of regurgitation jet we are calling the flow convergence zone or <clears throat> there is another name which is called PISA proximal isovelocity surface area so this is the PISA or the flow convergence zone then the jet will pass through the regurgitant uh, orifice and will get a narrower uh, neck and this neck which is the narrowest part of the jet is called the vena contracta the part at which the flow contracts and passes through the regurgitant orifice I am uh, having uh, through this figure. Lastly, when the jet reaches the left atrium, it will expand again in uh, a larger space, and I will have the body of the jet, which is called the jet expansion. Jet expansion. So uh, any regurgitant flow will have these three components, which is the PISA, proximal isovelocity surface area or flow convergence zone, then the narrowest neck uh, across, which uh, uh, means that the gestation is passing through the regurgitant surface area, which is the vena contracta, and lastly the expansion into the left atrium, which is called the jet expansion or the body of the jet. Take care that the regurgitant orifice uh, area which uh, through which the jet will pass may be circular or may be elliptical and this is very important tip and we will discuss it and know how it would affect our uh, assessment in the later slides the vena contracta and this vena contracta is the narrowest neck of the jet and it's very simple and it is independent of chemodynamics which means that it's less affected by blood pressure and uh, less dependent on the driving pressure and the flow rate how to assess uh, or quantify matrigage using this vena contracta we have to memorize these numbers if I am having vena contracta less than 3 so this patient is having mild matrigage while if the vena contracta is between 3 to 6, this means that this patient is having moderate matter regurgitation. And if the vena contracta exceeds or equals 7 in single plane, like for example in apical cord chamber view, this means severe matter regurg. Or if I am uh, having vena contracta in apical 4 and in apical 2 chamber, then I will take the average of the vena contracta. I will use different cut of point to define the severe matrix which would be uh, equal or more than 8. How to uh, assess vena contracta in uh, practical steps? First of all, I will adjust the Nyquist limit because uh, the same bit pull that applies to, to the color jet will apply to the uh, vena contracta because it's the same modality which is color doubler so I have to adjust the Nyquist limit and adjust the color box and adjust the gain uh, then I will uh, have a clear view of the color flow across the metal valve either in parasitic long axis or apical 4 or apical 2 then I will measure in any view that will show the three components of the jet I should make sure that I am having the three components, the flow conversion, the vena contract, and the jet, and I will start to measure the neck. Uh, I should also expand uh, my image by using the zoom option, because with zooming and with increasing the size of the image, I will uh, have uh, less uh, margins of error in my assessment, Use the scene loop to find the best frame for measurement, which is the largest uh, frame or the largest jet. Measure the smallest vena contracta in the largest frame. Take care, I will measure the smallest neck of the jet, but in the best frame, which is the largest frame. Take care, I am 
searching for the largest frame to measure the narrowest part in this frame. And I have to measure the vena contracta perpendicular to the direction of the jet, which means that if my jet is eccentric, I will measure it perpendicular to this eccentric jet. This is very important because this is different from uh, the method that we will measure the beta radius or the proximal azimuth surface area radius. Will not, we will not measure it perpendicular to the jet, but we will measure it in relation to the Doppler beam. Take care of the difference between uh, the both uh, methods of assessment of both parameters. If in parastellar long axis view, imaging must be optimized to ensure perpendicular cuts. And finally, report the average diameter if you are using uh, two perpendicular planes to assess the vena contracta and uh, this is uh, an example of a patient uh, which is ha who, who uh, was having mild to moderate muscle regurgitation uh, we zoomed the image we optimized the velocity of liaising here at uh, 55 we optimized the color box to include the left atrium and one centimeter above and we zoomed uh, our image and search it for the best frame which is the largest frame then we measured the vena contract as the narrowest part of the jet which is usually just below the effective regression to orifice area we, we can see that the leaflets coapt here just below the zone of coaptation I will find the narrowest diameter by measuring this narrowest diameter at zoomed image, uh, we uh, found that the, the diameter was 4 millimeter or 0.4 centimeter, which means that this patient is having moderate mitral regurgitation. Take care that we are measuring the vena contracta perpendicular to the jet direction. The jet direction here is like this, and the measurement is perpendicular. To this direction. What are the pitfalls of the vena contracta? First of all, it will be affected by the gain settings. Second, it depends on the color flow scale, which means that a low Nyquist limit will overestimate the severity, and we explain this in details. Lastly, intermediate values, which means that uh, 3, 4, 5, 6 uh, will need confirmation by a more quantitative method. So in gray areas or in gray zones of quantification, I should not depend only on the vena contracta or the color jet expansion area. I should search for quantification, which is calculating the regurgitant volume and the regurgitant orifice area. Take care uh, of this note and I, uh, I get this image from the British, uh, the recent British guidelines. In secondary mitral regurgitation, and we explained what's the difference between primary and secondary mitral regurgitation. In secondary mitral regurgitation, the vena contracta is elliptical because it's taking the shape of the orifice of the mitral valve. Because in secondary mitral regurgitation, there is usually dilated annulus. So instead of the normal coaptation of the leaflets, the leaflets will get larger, which means that the regurgitation occurs uh, symmetrically and along the whole orifice. So I will getting oval regurgitant to orifice area or elliptical orifice area, which means that if I am getting the apical fourth chamber view, the apical fourth chamber view will cut the valve like this. And we explain the different cuts and scallops of mitral valve in the mitral uh, valve anatomy lecture. So please refer to it before watching uh, this lecture. In apical four chamber, it will cut the valve like this. So I will measure vena contracta in shortest dimension because in oval shapes, I am having transverse large dimension and vertical small dimension. 
an apical four chamber view in second rheumatic regurgitation, the apical four will cut the valve like this. So I will have intermediate values between the shortest diameter and the largest diameter. While if I am getting the apical two chamber view, it will get the vena contracta in its largest dimension. It is horizontal dimension like this because in apical two chamber view, I will cut the valve horizontally. And to understand and to understand this in detail, you have to uh, refer to the anatomy, the lecture on, of mitral valve anatomy that is uh, present on the YouTube. So which one I would judge, and which one I would use to uh, assess the severity, the lesser one or the larger one? No, take care in second dimensional regurgitation, you have to measure force diameters, the smaller the smaller one in apical four chamber view and the larger one in apical two chamber view, then we'll take the average and take care in average vena contracta, the cutoff point for severity is eight, not seven. To say that this patient is having severe second rheumatic regurgitation. The average vena contractor in apical 4 and apical 2 should be equal or exceed 8 millimeters. So take care in second rheumatic regurgitation, the vena contractor should be measured in two uh, perpendicular views and should be averaged because the regurgitation orifice here is not circular as in most of uh, primary regurgitation jets. No, here it's elliptical. So the two dimension assessment of diameter would underestimate or overestimate the vena contracta. So I must take the two measures and average them. This is an example uh, of second rheumatic regurgitation and how to assess the vena contracta in this situation. Patient with uh, dilated cardiomyopathy and in apical two chamber view, we assess the vena contracta as uh, 0.6 centimeter, which means that this patient is having moderate regurg, while in apical uh, two chamber view, I am getting a larger jet and larger vena contracta, and it was uh, 1.0 centimeter, which means that 10 millimeters. So, which one I will uh, use? Uh, neither this uh, nor this, but the average of both, which means that it will be 8 which means that it would be severe mitral regurgitation. Then the last part uh, and the last um, 